Hey guys, there's going to be a lecture video for notes number two on the World War II unit. So first of all, let's go ahead and open up those notes, which are right here. All right, and the notes is build up to World War II. Now, what exactly does that mean? Is build up means everything that led up to. So what happened that we had another world war? After World War I, there was so much anger, so much sadness, that there was this feeling of we never want this to happen again. Um, they even had a conference uh, called the Geneva Conference on making rules of war because how horrible World War One, like certain things that even at war you shouldn't be able to do. So if that was the feeling when World War One ended, how did we get World War Two? So we're going to start off with Section One, uh, showing how massive World War Two really was, how much bigger World War Two was than World War One. First thing is two major theaters. Now, what does that mean? That basically means that World War Two for the United States was two separate war. We were fighting Germany by land in Europe. And we're fighting the Japanese in the Pacific Ocean, meaning two separate sides of the world. We have two separate wars going on, uh, which means you have to have a huge military to be able to send a military force to each side of the world. And to show you that it truly was two separate sides, Germany is going to surrender after um, Hitler dies. Um, they call it victory in Europe day when Germany surrenders. But on the other side of the world with the other war, the Japanese kept fighting for months. So it wasn't like just because Europe surrender, I mean, Germany surrendered, the Japanese said, okay, we're done too. That shows you two separate wars. The Holocaust, another major thing that um, that happened during World War II, 9 to 11, people, 11 million people got exterminated in the death camps, and we'll talk about that in detail in notes number four. The next big thing was the Pearl Harbor attack. Up to this point, the United States was neutral. We were not getting in the war. It's not our war. Hitler's not our problem. And on December 7th, 1941, we get attacked, and the very next day we declare war, and off to World War II we go. As part of a way to end the war, and also some argue payback for them attacking, for the Japanese attacking us at Pearl Harbor, we will be the first and only country to ever drop atomic weapons on another country, and we will drop those on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So those are two, four major issues that made World War II such a massive war. But again, what happened? Well, what happened is after World War I, there's going to be some instability in many of the European countries, including the Soviet Union. In fact, the Soviet Union didn't even exist before this. In 1917, as World War II, World War I was still going on and close to finishing, Russia left World War I and they entered into a civil war, a fight between itself, meaning the country fought against itself. And out of that emerged a brand new country, the Soviet Union, a new leader, Joseph Stalin, and a new system, communism. So as Russia used to be a monarchy, so it was uh, Russia, the monarchy, led by Nicholas II, and through the Civil War, it converted into the Soviet Union, led by Joseph Stalin, when it was a communist country. Essentially, now the government owned everything. So there's going to make a lot of major changes in agriculture and industry, and that basically is that the, all companies and all farms now belong to the government. So you no longer could own your farm, own your home, own anything. Everything belonged to the government, and it was going to be led by a dictatorship or a tyranny by Joseph Stalin. He had complete control, and he ruled with an iron fist, meaning he ruled harshly. And if anybody got in his way, he eliminated them and made everybody know that those people were eliminated because they got in his way. So scary time to live in this new Soviet Union. So that's one of the leaders of that is going to emerge for World War II. Rise of fascism in Italy. This is Benito Mussolini who sets up a fascist government in Italy. Now, fascism is the idea that you should be very, very proud of your country, but that you should understand that the interests of your country are more important than you. That if you have to do something that it makes your country better but it hurts people, that's what needs to be done because it's about the country, not about the people. Typically, like in our country, we don't pass things, laws, or do actions that is going to hurt people. Um, so in nationalism, I mean, I'm sorry, in fascism, it's the idea that the government is more important than the people. And this is one of the reasons why Benito Mussolini is going to align himself with Adolf Hitler, because he felt that it was a very good thing for Italy to be aligned with a powerful foe, I mean, an uh, ally like Hitler. But a lot of Italians are going to hate this, and that's why Mussolini eventually will be killed by his people because they didn't want to be part of Hitler's empire. Speaking of empire, how did uh, Hitler, how did it all start? Well, it goes back to World War I and the Treaty of Versailles. Everything that is going to happen in Germany that allows somebody like Hitler to take over happens because of how devastated Germany will be because of the Treaty of Versailles. It was punish, punish, punish Germany. It was humiliate Germany. It's their fault. And what they did is they created a very angry, sad, frustrated Germany 
that allowed Hitler's message to make sense. His message came out was from this book. It's called Mein Kampf. And essentially, it translates into my struggle. And what is the struggle that he talks about in the book? How much the Treaty of Versailles sucks and how much the Jews are to blame for what happened at the end of World War I. He blamed the Jews for losing World War I. And he is going to become very, very popular because of this book. Um, and now the thing is, he wrote Mein Kampf while he was in jail because he tried to take over the government in 1923 and he failed uh, and arrested and was thrown in jail. And that's when he wrote Mein Kampf that ultimately made him very, very famous. And he's going to try to rise in power, but the Nazi party was really small. But every time he, ri he tried to run for office, he lost. He would lose by a little less. And then the next time he ran for a little less. So the Nazi party was growing. Um, the reason why he couldn't win was essentially because Paul van Hindenburg, who was the president of Germany, was very, very popular. He was a World War I he a hero for the Germans. So Hitler couldn't, you know, get enough support to beat him. Eventually, though, because of the Hitler, uh, I mean, the Nazi party growing, Hitler will become chancellor, a powerful position in Germany, but still not president. Now, unfortunately, uh, Paul van Hindenburg is going to die after Hitler's appointed chancellor. And with the death of that big person who's in his way, Hitler's going to consolidate power and eventually going to make himself the true leader of Germany. And later down the line, the Fuhrer. The Fuhrer basically means the father of Germany, which means um, that rules and laws do not apply to him. He is the Constitution. And this is when he starts to do things that cause, you know, around the world to pay attention, like he gets out of the League of Nations in 1933. The League of Nations is all about peace, and he's getting out of that organization. That should be in a red flag that what he's looking for in the future. But they let him get away with it because of appeasement. They, appeasement, again, is the idea that they were given to Hitler and what he wanted to make sure they didn't have another world war. But every time they gave in to him, he was just getting stronger. He, in 1935, started building his military, which was straight up against the Treaty of Versailles. And they did nothing. He sent troops into the Rhineland. The Rhineland is a little piece of territory that's between France and Germany that for hundreds, of, no, for over 100 years, both countries have disputed saying it's theirs. And depending on who's stronger, France or Germany, it has become German or has become French. So the people who live there speak French and German because sometimes they're German and sometimes they're French. And he, take, and he takes it just by sending troops in there. And then in 1938, he just starts conquering territory after territory. And again, the League of Nations does nothing because of appeasement. By the time they try to do something, it's too late. He is too strong and powerful. What are the ideas of Nazism? You know, what makes this Nazi empire that he's going to build? One is extreme nationalism, which basically is that you should be super proud of your country. And he believed that the German race was superior. But he felt that it was only superior if he got rid of what he called impurities. So his next goal was racial purification to make the blood of Germany citizens pure by getting rid of anybody who he felt was not pure. And who are those? Those are Jews. Those are not. Um, those are gypsies. Those are homosexuals. Those are physically handicapped, mentally handicapped, and other minority groups that weren't the pure white race. Um, this is why the Holocaust happens. He felt that if you purify the race, those pure people will have even more pure babies, and then the next generation of even more pure babies will grow up to be adults, and then they will have even more pure, pure uh, babies, and eventually it will become a super race, a super race that was super smart and super strong that would rule Europe and the world for a thousand years. Um, and the third goal is national expansion, meaning more territory, because land equals power. So this is what he wanted and what he's going to do during his run as German leader. Um, what else was going on around the world? A lot of the democracies, new countries that were created after World War I were falling apart. The Great Depression is going to hit them hard and it's going to allow many dictators like we talked about Stalin, Mussolini, Hitler, Franco. You see Franco here in Spain to take over these countries. Uh, in Asia, in Japan, military groups are going to take over the government uh, in Japan. So now you have military leaders in charge of Japan, one of the reasons why they're so aggressive in attacking us in Pearl Harbor. And again, the civil war breaks out in Spain, and uh, Francisco Franco, who was backed up by Hitler himself, is also going to emerge as another fascist leader. So there's a lot of changes in countries and leadership. 
Now, for us, what's America doing during this war, during this time, when Europe is getting a little more crazy over there, when Hitler's rising in power, uh, Stalin is rising in power, what are we doing? Well, we are still clinging to the idea of isolationism. After World War I, we claimed that we were going to concentrate on ourselves and essentially ignore the rest of the world when it came to politics. So here is the 1930s and Hitler's rising. And for the most American people, their attitude was, yeah, we know there's a problem over there, but it's not our problem. We do not want to deal with it. We will let Europe deal with it because it's their problem. We're not European. So let them deal with Hitler. There was also this really uh, uh, harsh anger toward what they call merchants of debt. Merchants of debt essentially is just Walmart. That during World War One, we provided the countries that wore lots of money, loans, weapons, ammunition, bombs, tanks, everything they needed to kill each other. That essentially merchants basically mean sellers, that we were sellers of debt and that we did not want to do that again. So they are going to go as far as to pass the Neutrality Act, laws. They passed laws that said... Walmart would be illegal. You, it is outlawed, no arms, arms means weapons, no weapon sales, and no loans to any country at war. So basically, we wanted to stay out of that war for sure. We will be neutral, we were isolated, but that's not the reality of the world. The reality of the world is too many things were happening where FDR felt there's no way we could just be neutral. There's no way we could just be isolated. We have to pay attention to the rest of the world. Like when Japan attacked China, and one of our big trading partners was going to go away. So what FDR did, even though we're isolated, even though we're neutral, is he basically made Japan get out. Um, and we'll talk about in detail how he did that. But that is not an act of an isolated country. That is not an act of a neutral country. And it pissed off Japan because they wanted to conquer China and we didn't let them. And FDR made it very clear. We cannot be isolated. We cannot just pretend that Hitler doesn't exist. Because, yes, he might not be our problem today, but he definitely will be our problem in the future. And if we don't start to deal with them now, it might be too late later. So he tried to get Americans to convert more to the idea that we might have to get into World War II, even though they did not want to.